so here we have an example of where we're going to try and set up initial basic feasible solution using the northwest corner method. And the first thing you're going to have to do when you're doing the northwest corner method is obviously you set up the table. Now, in this example, you can see that the table is not yet actually finished. So because of the fact we have the supply and the demand are not equal to each other. So that's a glaring, you know, obvious, we've made a mistake and this, we need to move on from there. So how do we fix it from this point? Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to look at which one of these is bigger. Obviously, the 25 is bigger than the 22. So we have three missing from here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new row so that we can put three in. So we're still going to have that A, that B, that C, but we're going to create a dummy row of like D. And what we're going to do is we are going to add it in. So let's just draw this super roughly just so you can see how exactly you do it. U, V, and then you have your supply. And you'll have a three chilling over there. And the reason for that is now when you add it up, you have, you know, eight plus five plus nine gives you that 22. You need to, you want it to be 25 because you want the supply and the demand to be equal to each other. So you just add a three over there and then it becomes, you know, that 25. And you could do a very similar thing to like if this was 22 instead, you would have added a column because remember you want to, the, these values here need to add up to the 25. So just a reminder about that, you figure out which one is lowest because you can add to it to increase it to get to that. And if it is sitting in the supply, you're going to add a row. If it's sitting in the demand, then you're going to add a column. And what you do is for all the costs of the curve, the cost coefficients of these new variables that we bring in, because we technically bring in new variables when we bring in this row. Remember, when you have this process, that all of this, this is like x11, this is x12, x13, x14, and x15, etc. And you know, x21, x22, x23, x24, x25. What you're doing here is you're actually bringing in, you know, five more variables. You're bringing in 4, 1, you're bringing in 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, 4, and 4, 5, but you don't actually want them to impact your objective function. Remember, your objective function is usually minimizing cost. So instead of having values for the costs like the rest of them have, because there's an actual, you know, a factory, you know, for them, so A, B, and C have an actual factory, D doesn't actually exist. So you want it so that it's not going to have an impact on your problem. So it's not going to change your objective function in any way. So what you do here is you just put in zeros. So in your objective function, these actually aren't counting. So what's going to happen is one of them is going to equal to three, but because you don't actually get anything from it because it's a non-existent you know, factory, it's not going to have an impact then on the rest of your problem kind of situation. Just one of those will always have to be three, you know, to fit into get meeting your supply. And then you have, you know, your supply and your demand equal to each other and you can do the rest of your tableau. So once again, this has a supply and a demand, you know, are not equal to each other. How do we fix it? We fix it by adding in an additional row in this case, row because our supply is the one that's less than our demand. So we wanted to add up to 25 as well. And that means we have an entire row with, you know, decision variables, but we don't want these decision variables to impact our objective function. So we just make the cost coefficients zero. So you just add a row basically with all your cost coefficients are zero and the supply is equal to three and then you, you're done. So your new table will have that feature in it. So a little bit neater your new table, there you have your D with the three at the end there and the zeros everywhere. And now you can do the initial basic feasible solution in this case.